If you're looking for a new trout streamer to try this opening day, give this baby brown trout streamer a try. This fly has a lot of movement. It's also very translucent and fishes very well, especially early in the spring when all those stockers have been thrown into the river and all the big browns are eating them. We start here with a uh, 4X long size 4 streamer hook. You could tie it a little longer, I guess, if you wanted, but uh, I've found that this size for me uh, fits my needs. If I'm looking for something real big, I throw a different streamer. So we take our 6 out unit thread and tie on the uh, gold diamond braid, and now we're adding... Uh, red holographic flashaboo. I'm not sure that this stuff really makes a lot of difference to the fish, but it does to the fishermen. But on the other hand, I really feel like, uh, you know, we've used red and white, uh, red and just about all of our bait fish imitations for, for 100 years now. You know, if you look at the old red and white head and vamps, the old red and white bassarinos, two of my favorite pike lures of all time. Um, you know, red always does seem to have a good place in the, in the heart of a bait fisherman and, uh, um, you know, cast fisherman and an extremer fisherman as well. It maybe imitates the, uh, you know, the gills as that predator is chasing its prey. The prey flare, flares its gills, and yeah, that's one of the theories anyway. So we throw it in. Doesn't take much time, and it's awfully cheap to put on there. So we throw that on. Now we're going to wind our gold uh, diamond braid towards the front, trying to make sure that we don't bind down any of those red uh, flashaboo strips. Um, not too hard to do, but you want to you want to kind of be careful of that. Uh, you know, th this pattern is a really nice pattern because it's super light. Um, you know, you get a lot of bang for your buck on this pattern. It's it's a light pattern with a lot of translucency and moves well. But, you know, a five weight can throw this pattern absolutely no problem. You know, streamers are best fished on a sink tip. I really like the uh, the uh, Scientific Angler Streamer Express lines, uh, you know, 200 grain with the five weights. And it's the best line out there. If you don't have a sink tip, you don't have the money to go buy a new line, you can always add a little shot to the... Uh, leader and, and get it down that way but you know I'd really I really like a sink tip now we even off our red flash of and again I don't know if that's necessary but it's something that makes me feel better to have all those even so we bind that gold down and uh, and we're ready for the, the first uh, wing uh, we turn it upside down now the winging material is polar air I've played around with other things I've played around with EP fibers on this um, yeah, I've, I've tied it with marabou I've tied it with all sorts of different things bucktail uh, I really like the, the, the polar air. The only problem with polar air is it does tend to get knotted up and tangled up a little bit. But, but you know, for, for the movement that it has, I think that, uh, you know, that might be a negative, the, the tangling. But I think the movement, the translucency it has, it's a, you know, it's a big positive there. So we've tied in the white, tie it in past the hook shank, uh, you know, don't, um, or past the, past the hook bend, I should say, uh, you know, don't, don't skimp on this stuff. We want this fly to be two to three inches long at the minimum. Now we flip it over and we tie in the yellows again, polar air. Um, I typically tie the yellow in a little shorter, so it gives a little bit of, uh, you know, of a look when it's, when it's all over of, uh, you know, the, the white and the brown will meet and the yellow's kind of in between. Um, so we've got white. Then we've got brown, uh, yellow. Now we tie in our brown polar air. The yellow also is a little smaller hank than the uh, brown and the white. The brown and the white are equal parts. The yellow uh, is a little smaller uh, in diameter hank. Um, so we've got this tied in, and now we snip everything tight, and we're going to build a very, very nice head uh, on this fly. We pull everything back, and, and we wind away. Uh, and this, this head needs to be very big because we'll add eyes, and we're going to add gloss coat as well. Now that we have the head build up, we're going to whip finish this pattern off. And now the fun starts. So you know, we've got the body built up, the head built up, and a good good base for eyes coming in. That's that's the next step. Well, actually, the next step is a lot of Dave's flex cement, and that comes before the eyes. We're going to make sure that we layer this thing or coat this thing up with Dave's flex cement. We want to make sure that this thing doesn't come apart. You take a lot of time making this fly. And have the eyes fall off and the head come apart would be uh, would be not you know, disastrous. So we take the uh, Dave's Flex Cement, we rotate the vise, and make sure that we coat this thing very well with Dave's Flex Cement. Um, you know, I think the eyes on a on a fly are, are are very important. I think they really do uh, trigger something in that predatory instinct of, a, of especially of a, of a big brown trout. Um, you know, I've fished this without eyes and with eyes, and that, there's no question with eyes is uh, it outfishes it without eyes. I I don't know what it is about that about the look of the eyes, but I really think that with 
with big browns they see that and then it really does uh well pike are the same way bass i have seen you know we don't we don't put eyes on rapalos because the company likes to put eyes on rapalos so trust me if they if they uh caught as many fish or sold as many uh rapalos without eyes they, they would save the money on the on the labor so we've got our stick on eyes we've we put up the base of uh flex cement with the stick on eyes uh we're gonna let that dry now sometimes i'll put two layers of flex cement um, actually a lot of times I will, uh, but the key now is you've got to let that flex cement dry before we start to add the gloss coat. If you don't let the flex cement dry, it'll, the gloss coat will turn a cloudy color. So we've let that flex cement dry really well. Um, you know, it may be 20 minutes, half an hour just to make sure it's dry. And again, I do normally put two coats of flex cement on there. Um, one coat before the eyes and then another coat after the eyes. And now we take our gloss coat, uh, you know, whatever. If you like epoxy, you can use that. I guess I'm old-fashioned, and I use the old-fashioned, old uh, you know, generic white and black uh, bottled uh, gloss coat. Um, so we, we coat this head really well with, with uh, gloss coat. It's going to give us a really nice big head. It's going to shine really well. Um, I, I really like using this stuff. It really kind of brings those eyes out and makes them pop. So after we've got that all all coated up, you know, this stuff may take a little while to dry. So make sure that you have a drying rack, something like that. I I normally use my bobbin hanger uh, for it. But, you know, if you have a piece of foam that you like to use, throw it on there because it does take a little while. And you'd hate to have a nice fly like this uh, almost ready, almost done. And then you go grab it and throw it in the box and the, and the head gets deformed because it wasn't dried. That's not a not a good feeling for sure. You know, one of the things I really like about this pattern is just the translucency of polar air. Again, it does get tangled some, um, but I think it's worth the tangles just having the translucency of the pattern. And, you know, after it gets tangled, you throw it away or, you know, you, you strip it off and use the hook again. And it's simple and quick to tie. So it's not like you're, you know, spending 20 minutes tying this thing. So now we now now we finish this fly off with a little waterproof marker. Just put a put a few dots of, uh, of black par marks, I guess, uh, along the thing. And and then do it on this on the other side in the exact same spots. Probably don't need to hold it on the other side quite as long, but uh, you know that's it. This fly is pretty much wrapped up. Um, and I guess we're gonna straighten out the head a little bit, but uh, you know let that head. Make sure you don't touch that head for at least another ten minutes or so to make sure that gloss coat is uh, is good and dry. That's the finished product. Hey, thanks for checking out today's video. Uh, I think you'll have great success with this baby brown trout streamer. And as always, if you need anything, don't hesitate to contact us.